I'm in District 6. I'm in District 13. We see these crazy shapes and we look at the racial density maps and we're like, wow, it's a perfect match. It is to gain partisan advantage on the map. Like, I'm 21. I just started voting. <laughs> so right, right. it just isn't supposed to be like this. So right now we're in District 6. Um, we're about to walk across the street into our next district, which is District 13. Um, this right here is the gerrymandered line that we're walking over. North Carolina A&T is the largest public historically black college or university in the country. Oftentimes when I'm going back and forth from classes, in the back of my mind, sometimes I distinctly recall thinking like, oh, I'm going across different districts. I explained it to one of my line brothers yeah, the other day, and um, the first question I got back is, how is that even legal? Um, I had to respond that it's actually not. North Carolina, first time since 1870 do you have a Republican legislature. In 2011, when the Republicans assumed power of the North Carolina legislature, they decided to draw redistricting plans for both chambers of the General Assembly and congressional districts that packed black voters into as few districts as possible, thus limiting their overall influence and political power. We knew from the get-go this wasn't right. We see these crazy-shaped districts with appendages and arms. We overlaid them over racial data and were like, wow, it's a perfect match. Every 10 years, the state redraws district lines. The last time this was done was in 2011. That's when a group sued the state, saying the new lines rely too heavily on race, calling them unconstitutional. Well, fast forward to February, when a federal court agreed and required the state to draw new congressional maps. My district, the 12th district uh, in North Carolina, is the most gerrymandered district in the nation. The district initially, when I ran in 2014, spanned the corridor of 85. They called that a sort of a serpentine district, a snake district. In the middle of my re-election, the court determined that there had been racial gerrymandering by our legislature. And so both the congressional districts that were racial gerrymandered and the state legislative districts that were racial gerrymandered needed to be corrected. And when that happened in early 2016, Representative David Lewis was the head of the House side of the process. And during debate in the legislature, he unavowedly um, defined his goal. I propose that we draw the maps to give a partisan advantage to 10 Republicans and three Democrats, because I do not believe it's possible to draw a map with 11 Republicans and two. Democrats. It is to gain partisan advantage on the map. I want that criteria to be clearly stated and understood. He said, the courts have said we were guilty of racial gerrymandering and so we're going to turn off the race button, not consider it at all, and we're just going to draw a partisan gerrymander because partisan gerrymandering isn't illegal. You have a legislature that is really disconnected from the political will of the people and any accountability for their misdeeds. So we have Market Street, um, East Market Street on our left, and the line comes down there and come straight down the street. Originally, we were drawn into District 12, um, which was representative of Alma Adams, a Democrat here in North Carolina. That district was deemed unconstitutional, so we were considered packed into that district. Now we are not packed, we're cracked into District 13 and into District 6. Here on campus, we are divided by Laurel Street, which is very much in the center of campus. It's the continuation of the split, if you can kind of see up ahead where the rest of the road is. This is like a big central area of our campus. Students who want to go to the CAF go in 13, and when they want to exercise in the gym, they go in 6. Students are constantly walking across district lines. Some are aware, many are not. Let's put this to the test. Talik, okay. which district are we in right now? Oof. We're on what? Six. Yeah! 
<laughs> this line right here. There's people that I find today that still don't understand the concept of gerrymandering and how it is racist and how it affects the students on this campus every day. And so I think awareness is really, is really the key. I don't think we came into this space knowing that we were organizers, but rather saw an issue on campus and wanted to know what we could do to go about correcting this issue, or at least drawing attention to it. Folks that are black and young and college age are voting towards the left. Um, and for North Carolina to cut our campus in half, the largest HBCU in the nation, to me is just unnatural, because naturally we would be voting kind of as a collective. We are gerrymandered into two mostly white Republican-leaning districts. We have a representative who owns a gun store. We I'm Ted Budd, and I approve this message. We have a representative that talks about him being the Speaker of the House, replacing Paul Ryan. Students on campus, we have to become like these almost political experts. Right. We mm -hmm. are a representative democracy. It's not supposed to be hard, especially for young folks that are just getting this right. Right. Like, I'm 21. I just started voting. <laughs> so right. Right. it just isn't supposed to be like this. This is a good neighborhood, though, to canvas. I know, there's a lot of houses. All right, what, what's the number? I think there's a real deficit to democracy when, apart from the different weight that people's votes have, just in terms of being able to effectively reach voters, get your message out, for voters to know who represents them, it's a lot harder in districts that are drawn with boundaries that don't make a lot of sense. This is what the district looked like before it was redrawn in 2011, and then this is what it looked like after it was redrawn. And this just shows you who had been elected prior to it being redrawn. I'm a civil rights attorney. I'm also a candidate for the North Carolina Supreme Court. I grew up in a mixed race family. My father's black and mother's white. And it's always been my goal to try to get us closer to equal justice. Since I moved here, can I vote? Yeah. In fact, we could register you to vote right now. This is about how we structure our democracy and people understand there should be a level playing field. Districts shouldn't be drawn in a way that gives some voters more weight than others. Every vote counts. Every yeah. vote counts, for sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. It's great, yes, thank you. Thank you. I was taught that being, be, when I turn 18, I have the right to vote. But if my right is like diluted and is suppressed, why should I vote? And so that's what I get from a lot of young people. And I tell them that's the reason why we need to. If they're suppressing my vote, that means that I must have a big vote power out here. So I have to show it. If you really want people's voices to not be silenced anymore, gerrymandering is something that we're really going to have to tackle and address. It's not enough to want to change. You have to actually gather together and make that change yourself. On election day, we're going to do a march to the polls, the classic march, <laughs> gather students together. We did a lot of marches last year yeah, we did a lot of marches. and the year before. A lot of roads to the polls. One thing that we're known for is the Greensboro Four that went to the Woolworth counter in downtown Greensboro and demanded to be served. That's a legacy that we have here at A&T. There's this like big misconception of, you know, millennials are just too lazy to be politically engaged or too, you know, too this or that. I think that it's pretty evident that the youth are involved and the youth actually care. The key issue is to get like, try to get students riled up for such an important election. We've seen so many races come down to a couple of hundred votes. That's half of a floor of a dorm at this campus. And the truth is, as toxic as gerrymandering is to our democracy, gerrymandering can be overcome. If enough people turn out and vote, it can be overcome. The power of the youth vote is just the fact of being able to know that, hey, if I vote, not just me, but my friends and my friends' friends and their friends, if we all vote, we will be able to make some type of a blue wave happen and something big and change happen in terms of November. If better is attainable, why not go get it, you know? We deserve it. I think we should have it.